muscle of upper body muscle to uh, sketch out something. But as we go along, I want to emphasize that you will start your sketches very lightly. There are no mistakes. Every movement is part of your creation. Uh, figure sculpture is one of my favorites. And today we will also be molding a form from aluminum foil, heavy duty, and create a pose that we then staple to a platform. This can also be used at home to practice your sketches, and it will bend any way you want to. Uh, you are supplied with the paper folder, everything for your class work, uh, and the sketch pencils, of course, uh, are readily available. Your optional is a small eraser, but I prefer that you not erase anything. Everything is important in art. Uh, please observe the efforts of your fellow artists. Today, you all, to me, are artists, and you will leave here as artists. So you will please respect each other and everyone's work. Okay. Uh, the next class, Portraiture, you're asked to bring a handheld mirror large enough to see your full face. Uh, you will also be sketching each other, and uh, hopefully you will have a lot of fun. Uh, number three, shading in the value scale. We will actually be drawing geometric objects and constructing them. I have made patterns which we will fold and clip together, and they may be unfolded. All of this may be shared with your grandchildren to bring a lot of fun to your family. Uh, four, color wheel and color mixing. It is very important to know all of your colors, your complementary colors, uh, everything that will uh, enhance your paintings. Since we will be painting actually with red, yellow, and blue, I would advise all of you to dress accordingly. <laughs> I will supply everything. I have the, gla the glass jars with water and so on, and uh, brushes. If any of you do have a brush at home that is your favorite, please bring it along. Uh, class five, uh, brush techniques. Uh, we'll be doing a floral design and something that I call blue sumi. I say that because I'm not using India ink and I'm not using rice paper. We are just using ordinary paper and blue paint. Uh, but we'll be practicing the sumi strokes of the bamboo, and I hope it'll be pleasurable. In the last class, uh, axial balance is something that my teachers taught me in elementary school to balance everything as you would balance it in life if you want to produce something that is uh, symmetrical and pleasing. Uh, we will also, uh, I write down here that you'll need a small set of colored pencils. However, this morning I discovered I have enough uh, to possibly uh, share. But if you do have your own personal set, that would be very good. All right, let's get into it. Again, I have pre-sketched. So if you'll take one uh, sheet and put it onto your, uh, your board, uh, the main thing about the human form is observation and proportion. The human body is beautiful, uh, but you must consider you can't have like very short arms or very short legs. The longer the extension, the better. And so we're going to divide our paper into four equal parts. So if you just take your paper and bring it to the top, and just take your hand and crease it. Then take it again, bring it up, and crease it again. You will notice that the first crease, you will find the head and the shoulders which is appropriate. The next section, you will find uh, the waist. Sometimes the pelvis is also put in this area. I like to have very long legs. 
The next section will contain down to the knees and of course then down to the ankles. If you'll notice in the human body, our elbows come exactly where our waist is. So this makes it easy. Uh, whenever you are doing uh, elbows, we always take a swing to establish a point. All right, let's start with the uh, first quadrant. Okay. Uh, if you are left-handed, would you please raise your hand up? Am I doing something? Is there a ghost in the room? John? Oh. Okay. <laughs> All right. If you're left-handed, would you please put your hand up? Okay, if you will notice all left-handed people make their circles going clockwise. If you are right-handed, you will make your circles going counterclockwise. Do not be confused, I am a left-handed person. So please make your circles how you are comfortable. The spiral is an ancient method and also part of art therapy. So now in the first quadrant toward the top, let us start the circle. Do not make the head too large. Uh, can we lower that? I'm getting a... Well, you can't see it, so we need to have it down in the back. Oh. You can scoop it out and then you can move you as well. Oh, okay. All right then, start your swirl and make your head a little tiny bit for the neck. And let us make the shoulder area above the line. Can you all see this? Think of it as a helicopter going through the sky. And little by little, you come to the paper and you land. Let us go across the chest and down to the waist. You can either go side to side like this or make very large circles. How are we doing? If I go too fast, raise your hand so I slow down. Consider then the elbows and where the waist is. Come down to the waist area. Try to keep everything balanced. And up. And the hand is just a circle. We are not getting fancy. We're simply establishing a foundation. Below the middle quadrant are the, is the pelvis or hip bones. And they are briefly put in. Be reminded that any time during this drawing, you can change things. Everything can be changed. We are going now from the hip to, to the third quadrant line and establishing the kneecaps. Bringing it down from the pelvis. This is a good part because you can make this person as skinny or as chubby as you want. There is nothing standing in your way. This is your creation. This is also a good way to learn the muscles. And it's a fun way. Going down then to finish it off, I like to make this part a little thicker because these are the muscles, the heavy muscles of the leg to the ankle, 
heel. And it's always better to make your legs longer and your feet longer. It makes the whole uh, figure flow better. So let's finish this off. And I'm going to watch my time because I did several sketches for you and we still need to have time so that we can share and take our break and do our sculpture. So we have a lot of things to do today. If you will raise your hand to let me know uh, at what point you are. If you're finished, just simply raise your hand. If you need more time, hold two fingers up. Okay, more time. During this time, another fun thing I like to do is darken one side or use an emphasis. And for that, I put more pressure. The way you hold your pencil is up to you. I hold my pencil with my thumb and my forefinger, middle finger, and let it rest on my, uh, my palm. I do this because this finger, the forefinger, applies pressure. And so if I want a darker or a thicker line, I will push the pencil down with this finger. So this control. Uh, these fingers establish uh, a basic hold on the pencil, a basic grip. Other ways to hold the pencil, of course, is the way you used in, uh, you learned in grade school, uh, like this, with an inch away from, well, actually two inches from the tip, which is the regular way. You can still work this way. It's however you want to flip that pencil to give you control over your instrument. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to darken one side. because maybe I want to establish more of a personality. When your drawing starts to take on a personality, you're hooked. Okay. So this obviously, we would say, is some kind of an andro androgynous figure. Maybe it's a man or maybe it's a woman. We don't really know. If I, of course, make the hips larger, we establish the fact that anatomically it must be a woman. Not necessarily so. Please raise your hand if you are ready to move on. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'm going to tell people that have not, are not yet ready to quickly go over your work to establish all areas with quick movements. In other words, shimmy down. Just shimmy all over and get the basic movement in. If you want to do a little emphasis here on one side, that's fine. OK, I'm going to move on now because our next one is a little more interesting than just standing there and a little more difficult. So hold on, here we go. We are going to do the jump. This is a favorite with uh, athletes off the ground, and I put a little ground down here. I like to establish a little bit of environment. And of course, his hands are up as if he's playing basketball and he's going to make a, a hoop. All right, again, take your paper, fold it in half. And again, and ready. Uh, the, if you would like to put your artwork within the folder and save it, and then put a fresh piece of paper in your clipboard. Can everyone see the easel yet? Okay. 
If you, yeah, if you cannot see, we still have a seat there, another one over there. And of course, at any time during the class, if you feel like standing to do your work, that is perfectly acceptable. All right, we're going to start now with the idea that this figure is in motion and there will be a slight proportional difference. Our hips are still within this quadrant. Our knees are still a bit raised, but still within the lower quadrant. But now you have the variation of this leg coming up very high, and you have a swing. It was mentioned to me yesterday, what about stick figures? Oh, that's fine. Love stick figures as another method of doing this. My method is spiral. So I'm going to invite you to use the top quadrant and about halfway there establish the circle. So again in the air and down. And we're going to take a swing to establish where the spine is. And the spine is over here. So my swing is going to go this way. So if you take a swing from the top, from the middle of the top quadrant down through the second where you're establishing the pelvis, we will begin. Okay. Again, swirling, establish our head. Don't make it too big because sometimes we, all, we judge the body by the size of the head and that's not the correct way to do it. Now his head is slightly into his shoulders because he's raising his shoulders. We're going to put this shoulder at an angle, this going this way, okay? Because this arm is raised up and this one is lower. And again, don't worry about mistakes or misproportions because you can always go back and correct it. I want to establish where this, the second uh, line is that an elbow will be present over here. And concurrent. I hope that's not a fire drill. Okay. Do we have to do anything? No, I think it's all. Okay. All right, let's start with this arm. And we're going to bring it across so that it touches our elbow. Keep your arm free flowing. Don't think about, am I doing this right? Is everybody going to love me later? Don't think that. Just do it for yourself. Okay? And then, we'll bring this arm up and this hand. Notice the angles. It's not straight across. It's always at an angle up or down. Before I go on to the next arm, let's establish the chest area. This is our waistline. You can exaggerate anything you want. In fact, some of the best paintings in antiquity have elongated figures. I'm going to go on now to the pelvis. Because one of the pelvis or hips is concealed or partially from view, I would be interested only in this one of his right leg. 
I want to go back now to finish the arm. It is all right to leave a place and come back to it as long as you understand that everything must gradually come together as a whole. Leonardo da Vinci's contribution was that everything had to be brought forward at the same time. In other words, I can't do this piece and labor on it for two days and then figure out the rest of it. You need to establish uh, a common level at each point. All right, we're going to go down now to the next quadrant and establish the knee. Of course, this is the leg that came off the ground the last. And again, you can make this person as muscular or as skinny as you want. And again, establish the angle. It is a foot off the ground. Make the foot as long as you want. And if you made any lines that you want to grab an eraser, don't. <laughs> because every line is part of your creation and should not be eliminated. It contains, I would say, the spirit of the movement, and that's important. I'm going to finish off with the rest of the leg. Establishing the knee, coming up in the air. The muscle is a good, strong muscle in this person. And the heel. You can have a lot of fun at home drawing your own hand or your own foot. Become familiar with your, with your parts. I'm not going to emphasize or darken this area too much because the important thing is this forward arm. If you are satisfied, would you please raise your hand? Ah, very good. We're improving. It's very important to do quick. Uh, a lot of instructors will start uh, figure drawing out with uh, three-minute sketches. You can't sketch anything in three minutes. So what you basically are being trained to do is to establish the movement of the figure, the spirit of it, the thrust of the movement. Uh, then they give you five minutes, and you feel so relieved that you have that extra two minutes. But again, you're only establishing a little more detail. Finally, if they are very kind, they will give you 10 minutes. And then you are in heaven, because then you can establish a personality and uh, whatever you want bring out in the soul of that person. I'm going to move on now. So please tuck this in your folder, and let us go to a ballerina, and hopefully she will not give us as much trouble. The main thing with this figure is the turn and twist of the body. Being a ballerina takes great effort and training, and so you want to establish that in your work. Let us fold our paper in half at this point. And again, this will be the last figure before the break. Uh, I have other figures, so if we take our break uh, and then begin our sculpture, if we have time afterwards, 
you may either get so enraptured by creating these forms, I know it becomes addictive, uh, but if you finish to your satisfaction, we'll go back and do more figures. All right, again, uh, we've, we have to be careful now because this figure is a little smaller and we have to take into account the fact that her arms are raised above her head. And she is uh, arching and she is straining. So she needs to balance herself at a slight angle. So her leg is not coming straight down, it's at an angle. And this one, of course, is raised. Uh, so we're gonna start in the first quadrant uh, with the fact that this is going to be the area the arms are going to be in. So if you will start about, let's see, center, a little bit to the left, uh, and let's establish the head right about at the quadrant line. And a little bit to the neck. Again, I think it's important to see the turn and twist of the body. And so we're going to make a mock line here so that we know which direction we're going to be going. Now, as she's raising her arms above her head, you don't really see her shoulders. You just see uh, this, this part of her arm. So I'm going to just take a drastic, right below the first line, I'm going to put her shoulders, which at this point are very strained. So let's establish the shoulders. Let's note that the position of the elbows, and if you take a, uh, your pencil and kind of make an arc, you'd see that you really have to keep in uh, with the point of the arc. Looks like I fell short there. So I've got to put the elbows up here. I would say make note that there is a space above her head and there is a space between. So the elbows should come about there. So let's establish where we think we'd like the elbows. In a way, this is like a stick figure, I guess. Then we are going to establish where we want her hands to meet. And it's not important to be able to draw the hands perfectly. All that comes later. Now this part is easy. We're going to simply connect shoulder to elbow. Keep your body balanced. You can always go over things. And connecting to the wrist. We doing okay? Oh, good, okay. And now the chest area. Of course, ballerinas have long necks. I kept telling myself that. And very slim bodies. Now when you do these spirals, again, you can move from left to right freely, go straight to the middle. So the whole second quadrant is involved with her chest area, her abdomen, and her pelvis. Getting down. All right, now we're at the center. Pretty well, almost finished. Getting a, running just a teeny bit late. Uh, to the last quadrant, I'm going to put the knees above my line because I like to establish the long legs. And again, watch that angle. You may put this 
You may bring her leg all the way up to the middle line. And again, she's very thin. I notice my pencil's getting uh, weird, so I'm gonna have to switch to a block. Uh, this incidentally, if you're going to use charcoal, this soft charcoal will release more uh, medium uh, faster and darker. So that's why I like that. But also it's going to be a lot messier and it's going to drop all over your clothes. So you need to know exactly how your medium, you know, affects you and your environment. Okay, I'm going to go down stri straight to the knee. And now this leg will come straight down, again, establishing the muscle, the calf muscle is very important with dancers, down to her ankle. And of course, we're giving her toe shoes today. Since we have established her leg, her raised leg along this quadrant, then we can angle her down to just about touching uh, her knee with her toe. Sometimes when I am sketching or painting, I will play classical music. My favorite being, of course, Swan Lake. So at some point, during this sketching or painting that I am doing, I might just put my material down and flit across the room. <laughs> Until, of course, my body tells me, stop flitting, get back to your work. So when you see a figure, if you're really into it, uh, yes, you might hear music in your audio memory. And what we are trying to establish today also is your visual memory. So that you may go home and look at one of your sketches, take a blank piece of paper and do it by yourself with no instruction. Your mind will remember. You have a very strong mind. All right, we're gonna take a break about 10 minutes, when we come back, it will be 10.45. And for the people who are at home, not to worry, go to your pantry, take out your Reynolds heavy duty aluminum wrap, measure off 14 inches, and at the top, you will measure four inches in, four inches down, four inches in, four inches down. And using a ruler, just cut along the edge. At the bottom, you will simply remember six. Six inches in, six inches up. And that's it, we're ready for our sculpture. I made loads of these, loads. You can go home with an army today. I had a little girl in the third grade that became so obsessed with making these that she made nine of them and formed them into a pyramid uh, and established them as an exhibit. She was fantastic. Anyway, uh, I have cookies up here. They are delicious butter cookies and it is my gift to you for coming and being with me this morning. So, I invite you to, uh, let's see where I should put them, uh, over, shall I?
You have received two pieces of heavy-duty aluminum foil. To the people at home, we have cut them down four across, four inches down, four across, four inches down. At the bottom, we have cut six inches in and six inches up. These, of course, are your legs. This is your head. And of course, these are the two arms. The paper has two sides, a very shiny side and a dull side. If you would watch me, please, as I will demonstrate how to handle the foil so that we don't tear the head off. <laughs> OK. I put, I'm putting it in my hand, and I'm kind of patting it down because I want to uh, get a good grip on it. I'm going to do this twice. This one is just for demonstration, so you may relax at this point. When I come to the head, again, I'm, going to, I'm trying to establish a cradle. And for each of the arms, I'm establishing, can, you, can we all see what I'm doing? Okay, a cradle. I don't know how to hold this. So I'm cradling it. Uh, I want to see the shiny side. So that's my objective. I take the leg, and again, I'm going to cradle it, kind of squish it inward, cradle and squish, scrunch. I guess scrunch is the word. OK, so I'm coming out with this uh, creature. So now I want to have him come a little bit more together. So I'm going to push down on him. And again, like we said, uh, Da Vinci once said, everything at the same time in balance. So with the head, I'm going to scrunch it over. I'm going to turn it over. And then I'm going to try to scrunch the arms just a little bit, mainly because I want to gain control. Now I'm going to take both hands and I'm going to scrunch the middle very gently and hold it, moving the arms to one side and scrunching the head, moving the legs out, and again, shiny side out. I'm going to scrunch, scrunch, and scrunch. I want the bottom part, the foot, to be flat and not thick because I want to staple it onto the platform. So you can see how quickly this is done. And if I want the head to be smaller, I will push it into the body. And now, squeezing him, squeezing more, and molding him. As I do it, I mold him. At some point where he develops a personality, you're hooked. <laughs> this is your own personal little person. And he or she will move and do whatever you tell him or her to do. And you can twist him and turn him. But one thing you cannot do is take him apart again. Because once you have made him, you cannot undo what you have done. And there he goes. Well, it's a Charlie Chaplin kind of pants, but I'm going to scrunch him up a little bit more. I'll try to do this quickly because I want to uh, have you all engage with me. And again, let's flatten those feet. Okay, guy. And he seems to want, just like Charlie Chaplin, to put his leg out and do something funny. Maybe he's going to fall over. I don't know. So, anyway. Funny guy. There you go. Whoop. Okay, now I'm ready, and let's do it together. Holding the aluminum, cradle it in your palm, give it a couple of wax, cradle the head, a couple of wax, cradle each of the arms, push them into your palm. 
Be very gentle. Do not want to tear it. It's no fun. Go down to your legs. What a good one. Start to bring him in. Please raise your hand if I'm going too quickly. Ah, I see some creations already. Wonderful. Now I'm going to try to cradle him a little bit more. He's not ready. Okay, so I'm going to get his head. Turn it down. I should show you the other side, too. I'm turning his head down like this to establish. Okay. Again, scrunching him in the center. Uh, raise your hand if I'm going too quickly. We okay? Are we okay? Okay. Uh, try to get him in the center. Did you do the, did you do the center before the arms? Uh, no, I try to do it all at the same time, basically. The head gets scrunched. The arms get slowly scrunched. If you can put your hand around his waist, then you ha have more control oh. over him. I'm trying to bring this where they can see that better. No, I don't have a black background. Sean, can you bring a close up on this creature? Okay, so we have scrunched the head, and I'm squeezing the middle. Maybe if some of you are, are feeling that it's out of control, squeeze the center. <laughs> and now squeeze the arms. And you're doing this business. You're rotating your, uh, your hand and your wrist. You're rotating it so that you're getting it uh, all at the same time. I don't know how to describe it. And you're really working those edges of your fingers. And then you switch hands to do the other one if you so choose. Or you can just keep up with the one hand. And I'm very dependent on my left hand to do every single thing. I make the right hand do all the heavy lifting. Very unfair. Okay, so I've got that. So now I'm going to focus more on the legs. And I'm going to squeeze and turn my hand again. Turning, squeezing, turning, squeezing. Establishing the feet very flat. Of course, if the legs are not long enough, uh, you can always push it up in the middle. And of course, then, what you know about the elbows, you can bend the elbows so that the arms are raised. And the other one. Squeezing. You're doing any better now? Raise your hand if you feel confident. <laughs> Where are those hands? Bless you. Oh dear. Okay. And again, the feet should be flat. You do not have to be afraid. Uh, this, this person will do anything. He can do a high kick <laughs> like this. Okay? Swim, fight, do anything you want. Bend the knees. He's quite bendable. 
So you can turn his body any way you want and twist it in any manner. Hold him up, if you will, so that I can see what, uh, how your progress is coming. Oh, very nice, very nice. John, can we let it get a shot of the, uh, the class? Hold him up again for Sean. <laughs> okay, who's ready for another one? Okay, let's let's give him a companion. Now, each one of you, of course, will bring home uh, a sheet for well, t uh, two sheets, I think, if we have two for you to bring home, because I want you to share this knowledge with your grandchildren. It will highly amuse them, especially you know the younger ones, because then they can do something with you. And there's no greater pleasure than having uh, your grandchild laugh and smile at, as he creates something with you. All right, we're going to do another one. At this point, I will show you some of my little guys. Uh, this one is... Um, one leg up, and I just stapled one of his feet. Let's see, it's another guy. And this one has two feet stapled and going over. Like I said, they be, it becomes addictive once you start doing these little guys, and they seem to land on your table, and cat runs off with some of them, and you know. This, this is what happens. So you have a whole family here, and if you, if you want a shorter one, of course, you can cut your, uh, your aluminum 12 by 12 if you just want a child. At the school that I taught at uh, Martin Luther King Jr., we had uh, art exhibits and the children displayed all of their figures uh, on tables. All right, we're going to do one more. And I think, looks to me like we have at least enough for one. Uh, I'm sure all of you have aluminum foil at home uh, if you wanted to follow the pattern. Okay, we're going to start again. Again. Uh, dull side towards you, shiny side out. Cradle. Okay, there's just one more. Cradling the head. Cradling the arms. Whenever I do work, if I fail the first time, the one word comes into my mind, again, <laughs> again. And that should suffice to tell you my attitude. If I do a bad painting, I just put it to one side and say, uh, well, if it doesn't look good tomorrow, we will paint it over and we will do another one. Nothing is wasted. Everything serves a purpose. Okay, he's been cradled. And now we're going to try to scrunch his head. Arms. 
soon as I have that other arm scrunched, I'm going to bring the middle together because that's where I have my control. And then scrunch the legs more. I have several platforms. I have three staplers. So you need to decide if you want one of the feet on the platform or both of the feet. So that will be up to you. And of course you will write your name on the platform before you staple so that nothing gets lost. Okay, I have him at this point, and now I need to complete him. How are we doing? Raise your hand if you feel that you are more confident the second time around and that you have improved your technique. Thank you. Thank you very much. Your fingers have a memory, too. Nothing is wasted, nothing is lost. It's good if you can give him or her a personality to establish what he is going to do and why he is posing the way he is. Perhaps he's just stretching out his arms because he's come home from work and his children are welcoming him. Everything has a story. You can make up a story on your own or let the figure that you are working with give you that inspiration. Welcome home. Okay, what I'm going to do is to place uh, various size cardboards, um, some are long, some are square, uh, at the tables, and uh, you may choose uh, which ones. And once you've established that, write your name, and then, of course, uh, it's very simple to staple it. Um, May I have a volunteer to help pass these out, please? Sure. Thank you. Yeah, I guess just just put yeah, some please. on each table, and yeah, people can choose what they want. Oh, okay. thank you so much. Thank you, Teresa. While Teresa is passing out the platforms, uh, I do have three. Three staplers, they are all loaded and ready to go. So as soon as you've established, let's see, where shall I put these? Um, there's an empty table at the back, so I think maybe um, we will put these three sta staplers in the back of the room so that you may uh, staple them. Do we have any extra staplers, or I think this will be enough? We'll be enough. Oh, okay. I'm going to count and see how many extra sheets of aluminum foil I have. That way I'll be able to tell you uh, how many pieces uh, each one may take. One, three, four, five, eight. Okay, we're down to eight. Okay. But I do have enough for everyone to have at least one to take home. I do not have enough for everyone to take two home. So, uh, I can make more in 
Yes. Okay, that's fine. So, uh, Sean, would you please put these in the back? Yes. And uh, everyone may take at least one, and if there is some uh, left over, please, you're welcome to take those also. So I invite you to get up and freely uh, go to the back and establish your figures. You need to share your <laughs> You might share your stories with your fellow artists and explain your people. I wonder if I should help them staple. Yeah. All right, I'm going to move to the back of the room. <coughs> and uh, if you have any difficulties stapling, I will assist you at that point. And of course, you're free to come up and look at my, my little guys and gals up here to see how uh, I, I managed to staple them. And I will say at the end of the class, if anyone would just like to uh, take them home as uh, extra for the children, uh, please do so. Remember to tell the children, no, you cannot undo it because the head will just get ripped off. Okay, I'm going to the back now to assist. And if you do not need assistance, then that's wonderful. That's okay, we'll just, yeah, just leave it. Uh, you can leave it on the back table, too. Yeah, you can put them over here because some, some, if someone takes an extra one, then they might want to have an extra platform. Yeah, just, what happened to my staplers? And there's one there, and there's oh. one there, and one there. Oh, 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 okay. Oh, there's one there. Oh, okay. Are we okay? Ah, you gave him a sword. Good. I like adventure figures. That's just what the young boy made. He had a shield in the other hand. <laughs> Very adventurous. Well, he has a powerful chest. Oh, yeah. How do we do that? Well, you can just ask it right now. Just say, if you have any questions online, you can do ask. May I show this to the class? <laughs> oh, this is unusual. Uh, and this is uh, Diane. Diane. Sean, maybe we can get a close-up of Diane's work. Uh, this is done by Diane, and I don't know how we can get a good close-up on this. I'll try turning it. Diane has chosen to combine the two figures, and it looks like they are dancing. Yes? Diane, maybe you'd like to explain this to the audience? I'm trying to, trying to move this so that uh, people can see better. My, my blouse provides a black background. So I'm going to just turn it slowly. Thank you. This is beautiful. So yes, uh, you can combine several figures on the larger platform so that they interact. Let me turn this this way. Uh, is there anyone else who uh, established two on a platform interacting? Oh, okay. Well, it looks like you are unique today, Diane. <laughs> Thank you very much for sharing. Thank you. Is there anyone else who would like to share? Ah, too shy. If there's anyone online who would like to ask a question, I think we can open up the floor for about five minutes. 
before we conclude the class, uh, if you would like to continue any sketching, I do have some other figures to do. Uh, so how do we do that, John? How do they ask questions? You can just type it in and it's on your Uh huh. Okay. Uh, oh. All right. I've never done this before, so. So is there anyone else who would like to share? Please raise your hand. Uh, Teresa? Okay, here we have Teresa. Oh, come and share your story. No, 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 no. You come over here, Teresa. Where, where I'm standing. There you go. Okay. All right, please explain. This is Sara. He has a heavy burden on him. <laughs> thank, thank you very much, Teresa. Uh, I, I appreciate the way uh, the movement and the thrust of the limbs, and this is all about what the figure drawing is, just to release yourself, release your spirit, to le just let it flow out through your work. Uh, that is the way we express ourselves as artists in this world. Is there anyone else who would like to share? Are you waiting for me to coax you up here? <laughs> it's nice if you come up and tell your story and express your feelings to the on uh, to the at home uh, audience. Yay! Okay. All right. We're here to wrap it up. Oh, oh we're wrapping it up. Yes. Oh, okay. Uh, all right then. I thank you very very much for coming today and being with me and, and Sean. And I want to thank uh, Danny Lee for uh, originating uh, the class and working with me uh, to develop the ideas. And I'm especially going to thank ACC uh, for having me here. It's been a pleasure working uh, with the staff and, uh, and the rides, transportation, just every aspect. Uh, I've, I've been here for classes before and I think uh, it's a very nice social atmosphere. Okay. So thank you very much. And round of applause for my artist. Thank you. So. Oh, all right. Uh, next week, next Thursday, same time. Uh, and again, it's going to be portraiture, so please bring that mirror. I want to see your full face. Uh, <laughs> I, I know some, someone's father said, mm -hmm. Uh, it, nothing has to be perfect. None of us are perfect. But we try, okay? That's the whole thing. If you're trying, then you're succeeding, okay? You're a winner. So uh, bring the mirror, and that's, that's all you'll need. Um, I'll have some fun friends uh, with me. Of course, they only exist from <laughs> the neck up because they're foam figures, and uh, they'll be wearing hats, maybe a wig, and provide some amusement for us. Uh, you'll, of course, be uh, a pairing with someone else and doing exchange portraiture, uh, profiles, maybe three quarters or so on. And we'll discuss the eyes and different noses and things and uh, age differences. So we'll have some more fun. And, uh, and with each class, uh, I, I just hope you go home with joy in your hearts because today has been a wonderful day for me also. Thank you. Okay.